Yeah, I'm Claudio Scordino and I'm going to, to tell you something about how we have handled uh, mixed criticality in, uh, in an European project uh, uh, focusing on the automotive domain. Uh, so this is a summary of what uh, we are going to see. Uh, I will introduce you to the problem of uh, mixed uh, criticality. What is that? Uh, what does it mean? Then I will introduce uh, the Hercules project funded by the European Commission. And then uh, we will see the uh, software architecture of what uh, we have uh, developed uh, within uh, this project and uh, all the pieces that uh, we have uh, we have uh, implemented and uh, I will of course introduce all also to the jailhouse hypervisor uh, giving you information about how to use uh, this hypervisor. A uh, few words about our company, we are a company located uh, in Pisa, so here in Tuscany we are about uh, 22 people, we are specialized in firmware and software for embedded devices and at the moment uh, we are hiring, so we look for people with passion for programming and uh, a deep knowledge of C programming, computer architectures and operating systems. So in case you are interested, you can uh, talk uh, with me offline later on. So what is uh, mixed criticality? Uh, suppose you have a, a, a two, two kind of systems. Uh, a system with uh, non-critical tasks, uh, for example, I, I've made some examples in the, in, uh, in the slide. You, you can have uh, non-critical tasks like uh, multimedia, human machine interface, networking, logging, uh, data backup, and so on. And uh, often if you have a, a control system, you have a set of uh, critical tasks. Uh, I've made uh, other examples like uh, autonomous driving, uh, industrial automation where you have to move a robot, uh, robotics of course, and engine control for example uh, in automotive. Now suppose that you want to put both kind of, uh, of tasks on the same system. So you want to have a single hardware handling both kind of tasks. So diff different level of criticality, and, uh, this is where the name uh, ca comes from, uh, coexisting on the same platform. Is it possible? Can we do that? Uh, the reason for, uh, for designing uh, such, a, such a system is uh, cost reduction, especially in terms of hardware, because uh, you, uh, uh, this way you get rid of uh, at least one hardware platform. So in case uh, you have to produce millions of, uh, of, uh, of systems, you, you have a cost reduction in terms of hardware. But uh, there is also another, another uh, advantage, which is uh, uh, more flexibility in moving one task from one domain to the other domain. Suppose uh, you start designing a task which, is, which you think is not critical, then uh, you realize that uh, no, it's a critical task. Then you can move it easily uh, within the same platform from one domain to the other domain. So how can we do this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, systems uh, using a uh, uh, Linux operating system? Uh, we, we will see uh, in a while. Uh, I, I would also um, focus on the uh, specific use case of automotive. Uh, in the automotive uh, domain, you, you, you have probably read that uh, there is going uh, something, uh, something new related to autonomous driving, maybe mainly, or to uh, assisted driving. So here you have non-critical tasks like uh, infotainment systems, multimedia, again, human-machine interface, navigation, uh, and the dashboard. And uh, you uh, have safe critical tasks like uh, the engine or the brake control, and uh, autonomous driving and assisted driving. So the first uh, and uh, the most natural approach seems to be uh, make Linux real time. Uh, over, over the time there have been uh, a lot of uh, attempts of, uh, of reaching this, this kind of system. Uh, we started with a re, uh, RT Linux a long time ago. 
uh, which uh, uh, whose patent uh, was uh, eventually bought by Wind River. Then uh, there has been RTI, uh, which, uh, however, focused only on x86. Then there has been Xenomai, uh, and, uh, and, and this is the dual kernel approach. So you have a, a actually hard real-time system based on Linux. And then there is Prempt RT, which, uh, however, is, uh, is focusing more on soft real-time. The, the common issue with this approach is the certification and the standards that, uh, uh, that are needed uh, in some specific domains, uh, for example, automotive. In automotive, uh, you have to, uh, to, to have the, the operating system following some uh, rigid rules uh, about uh, which functions must be provided uh, and so on. So you cannot use a general purpose operating system for doing, for example, engine control. Uh, this is forbidden by the European rules. So we have to follow a different approach. Uh, the other approach that uh, we have uh, followed is uh, resource partitioning. So modern hardware, uh, and uh, here I include Intel, AMD, ARM, and so on, already provides support for, for virtualization and part um, partitioning at the hardware level. So there are a lot of uh, existing technologies already available in the, in the system on chips. Uh, for example, in the case of ARM, we have a trust zone for executing uh, secure operating systems, or uh, you have uh, virtualization extensions and uh, SMMU, which is uh, basically the IOMMU, for, uh, uh, for virtualizing uh, the hardware resources. So the, the basic idea behind uh, the project is to leverage uh, these, uh, these kind of technologies uh, for running multiple operating systems. This way you can run a, um, a general purpose operating system like Linux uh, for the non-critical tasks and a certified operating system for the uh, critical tasks on the same platform. So the project uh, that uh, started uh, almost uh, three years ago, and uh, as, I, as I was mentioning, it's been funded by the European Commission. And uh, here there is the hardware architecture. Uh, basically, it relies on a multi-core ARM platform, where through a DGL house hypervisor, we have allocated some cores to the uh, Linux operating system and one or more cores uh, to uh, an RTOS certified uh, for the automotive. On top of uh, this, uh, on top of this uh, software architecture, we have run automotive uh, automotive uh, applications uh, made by Magneto Marelli and avionics application made by Airbus and Python. And uh, so this is uh, the overall uh, software architecture that uh, we, have, uh, we have implemented. So uh, as a real-time operating system, uh, we have used uh, uh, an open source uh, RTOS called uh, uh, Erica Enterprise, which is made by our company, but released as open source. Um, it, it's been designed and developed specifically for the automotive uh, electronic control units. So uh, it's been designed uh, following the OSEC VDX uh, standard, which was uh, the standard in, uh, in Europe for, for implementing the operating system uh, for engine control. And uh, it, it follows also the HAUTOSAR OS standard, uh, which is uh, the new European standard for, uh, for doing uh, this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, it's been implemented following uh, MISRA C, uh, C coding. And it's available uh, both as GPL software or uh, under, uh, um, with a fee, you can get the linking exception in case you don't want to disclose your own, uh, your own code. Because uh, differently than Linux, uh, this, uh, this uh, small operating system is directly linked uh, to the application code. 
So uh, there is a, you need a linking exception if you don't want the GPL to affect your own code. And uh, th this operating system is already used in production, for example, on the um, Alfa Romeo Giulia, if I'm not wrong, but uh, uh, it's already used by Magneti Marelli and uh, other companies uh, in, uh, in uh, production. And uh, it supports uh, a large set of uh, system on chips and CPUs, uh, mainly uh, the, the, the most used uh, in, in the automotive. So, uh, Cortex M, Cortex R from ARM, or Tricor Aurix uh, from uh, from Infineon, and it also supports hypervisors like uh, Xen, KVM, Jailhouse, and so on. So, what is uh, this Jailhouse hypervisor on which we have uh, we have put Linux and uh, our RTOS? Jailhouse is a very lightweight hypervisor. It's a young project uh, sponsored by Siemens, but releases open source software. Uh, the code is hosted on GitHub, and uh, it, it's very tiny because the, the, their, their goal is to develop a safe critical hypervisor uh, which can uh, be eventually um, certified. So it's a tool to run real-time or safety-critical tasks. In fact, it, uh, it introduced a, a, a very low overhead on the system. On multi-core platforms, which, is, which uh, is the first requirement, you need at least uh, two, uh, two cores. And aside Linux, so this is another requirement. Uh, it's it's Linux-based. And it provides a strong and clean isolation between the, the guest operating systems running on the hypervisor and performance like a bare metal system because it introduces a very low overhead. So um, as I was mentioning, Linux is required. Um, there is a, a cell. We, we will see later the, the naming convention. A anyway, you, you need Linux uh, for uh, a part of the system which is similar to the DOM0 of Xen. And uh, it cannot run a modified operating system like uh, Windows, uh, so because uh, it doesn't have all the emulation support and so on. Uh, by design, it, it, it tries uh, to to remain uh, as uh, as uh, as tiny as possible. The the design is static, so you have a one-to-one -one resource assignment, uh, and uh, there is no scheduling uh, between uh, one. Uh, uh, internal to one core. So each core must be assigned uh, to just one operating system and uh, you cannot share a core uh, among different operating systems. There is no hardware emulation and uh, yeah, and this is what I've uh, already, already said. So uh, the naming convention. Um, there are some cells uh, which, which are the partitions of the system. And uh, the first cell which runs Linux is called the root cell. And uh, the, the, other, uh, the other guests are called the inmates and are run on, uh, on different cells. So uh, this is just the naming convention. So, uh, we have created an inmate running our real-time operating system uh, alongside the Linux operating system running on the root cell. And uh, this is the typical RAM layout uh, because uh, um, the portion of RAM which is used by the hypervisor must not be given to Linux. Uh, there are uh, a couple of ways of uh, achieving uh, this. Uh, on x86, uh, you can rely on the memmap uh, boot param. On, on ARM, uh, this is not possible, so you have to uh, specifically uh, write uh, uh, the, the portion of RAM in, into the device tree. Or otherwise, uh, you can shrink the memory seen by Linux by using the mem boot param, which is uh, very quickly and uh, so, uh, so you, you just give uh, less memory to Linux and you put uh, the hypervisor at the bottom of, uh, of the memory. 
how is uh, the architecture of jailhouse? Uh, you have to understand a few, a few uh, concepts uh, for being able of following uh, the rest of the, of the talk. Um, jailhouse has a driver, a uh, Linux kernel driver, which is used for, um, uh, for loading the firmware of the hypervisor, but also the configuration of the root cell and also of, of the other of the other new root cells. So through this uh, this uh, driver, which uh, creates the dev jailhouse uh, interface, you can you can uh, and through uh, proper commands, uh, you can easily uh, partition the system and run the hypervisor. How is the configuration of uh, of the cells? Um, all the configuration is written through uh, C data structures. So this is an example of a root cell configuration file. Uh, you have, for example, a field for the hypervisor memory specifying the physical address where the uh, hypervisor starts. And you can have the back consoles. And you give the root cell a name, which is, which is then used by all the tools for referring to the root cell. And uh, this is uh, quite a long file because uh, you have to, to mention all the, all the peripherals and so on. On x86, uh, this file can be, uh, can be automatically generated uh, through the jailhouse config create command. Unfortunately, this is not available on ARM. So you have to take the data sheet and write it uh, by yourself and uh, try and try again uh, until uh, you, you get it working. So, uh, for the, the, the configuration of the new root cell is uh, it's easier because uh, usually you, you tend to give less, uh, less resources uh, to the new, roots, uh, the, the new root inmate. So you have uh, still a uh, data structure with all the information, for example, the CPU's field uh, specifies on which CPU you want to run this, uh, this uh, particular uh, inmate. And again, you, you give a name to the inmate for running, uh, for referring it uh, through the commands. And uh, there are a lot of, of different kind of resources you have to specify. Uh, the, the, the most important ones are memory regions, uh, especially if you have a system uh, uh, where you have a memory map I.O. But uh, you have to specify also the caches, uh, the PCI devices, if you have any, and the, uh, the memory map the URs. So how, how do we uh, install and run uh, Jailhouse? You compile it uh, through the make uh, command and, uh, and you install through uh, make install. When compiling, uh, it also transforms all the C files of the configuration into uh, binary files called uh, dot .cell files. So uh, these, uh, these, uh, these C files are compiled into these binaries that are then given to the dev jailhouse entry uh, for, for, uh, for, the, for the system. And uh, once you have uh, installed the, the, the hypervisor, uh, you can load the driver through mod probe. And when you load the driver, it creates the dev jailhouse interface uh, for, for issuing commands. Then you can uh, provide uh, the, the cell file, which, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, comes from the C file describing the, the system uh, through the enable command for enabling the hypervisor. When you enable the hypervisor, uh, the hypervisor sits on top of the hardware, between the hardware and Linux, taking all the resources you have specified in the, uh, in the cell file. So usually it, it takes all the resources of the system. Then you can create a cell uh, specified by a C file, then compiled to a cell file. And you can load a binary code into the cell 
in our case, it's the real-time operating system and the application that runs uh, linked to the operating system. And then you start the cell. At that point, uh, the, the, the CPU, uh, the, the, the specific core specified in the cell file is given to uh, this other operating system and uh, Linux cannot uh, use it uh, anymore. And uh, you can then get statistics about uh, the, run, uh, the cells that are running. So when, when you do a cell create, uh, the system uh, allocates the CPU for the real-time application. And so you have uh, uh, Linux running alongside uh, the, the RTOS. What happens when something goes wrong, uh, when you have uh, misconfigured something in, in, the, in those uh, C files? Uh, you, have, uh, you get uh, um, an error on the, on the console specifying uh, what happened. Uh, for example, in this case, we had uh, um, a, data, a wrong data read unhandled because it wasn't, uh, that address wasn't specified in the C files. And you can also inspect uh, the program counter. You, you can see uh, which level of the, um, of the ARM uh, was the code. The EL1 is the, is the level, is the level uh, designed for, uh, for the operating systems. And also which, which CPU uh, created the, the issue and which was uh, the related name for the inmate. So uh, when, when you start uh, um, porting uh, Jailhouse to, to a platform, you start uh, uh, having this kind of errors and then you look to the data sheet and uh, you try to understand uh, what, uh, what uh, was, uh, was mapped at, at, that, uh, at that address. So in, uh, in the specific case of uh, Hercules, uh, we have supported uh, two kinds of platforms. Uh, one was uh, the NVIDIA Jetson TX1 or TX2, which uh, has uh, some Cortex-A57. And uh, in the case of the TX2, also two uh, Denver cores. In the case of Xilinx, instead, uh, we have a Cortex-A53 uh, uh, cores. And um, unfortunately, the NVIDIA ships uh, its own uh, vendor kernel, so it doesn't rely on vanilla kernel. So we, and, uh, and this is not supported by mainline jailhouse, so we had to uh, create a specific uh, tree of jailhouse for supporting uh, the vendor kernel uh, by NVIDIA uh, on, on this platform. And, uh, and uh, we also worked uh, with the uh, jailhouse uh, community for supporting uh, the vanilla kernel in the standard uh, jailhouse. So uh, jailhouse also provide, uh, provides a, a mechanism for, for inter-guest communication. So suppose you want Linux to, to communicate with uh, your RTOS. Um, jailhouse provides a mechanism which is similar to the EVC mem device model by QM. Uh, unfortunately, this is a very basic uh, way of uh, communicating and the setup is not that easy. So what uh, we have done has been to, uh, to build on top of uh, this uh, uh, raw mechanism, um, uh, a mechanism that has an API similar to the How to Sarcom API. So, you can send and receive signals, uh, which, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the name of a message in the OutSAR standard. So we have uh, created uh, this, uh, this uh, API, this library, uh, uh, providing a blocking and non-blocking calls and dynamic sides uh, messages uh, and uh, other features. And uh, this is going to be released soon again under the GPL license. So uh, to, to, to prove uh, the fact that we have been able of running the two operating system, uh, we have made a small demo uh, and we have put the, the, um, 
the video on YouTube and the demo is very trivial. Uh, there are Linux and uh, the Eric RTOS. Uh, on Linux, uh, we, we get uh, uh, mainly we, we drive a wheel, uh, a DC wheel with a joystick. Um, the joystick is connected to Linux, uh, then the information is sent to Erica. And uh, on Erica, we, we have made a, a PWM in software for, uh, for showing that uh, we can do ha ha hard real-time control. So even if we had a PWM as a piece of hardware, we have, we have done it in software through a GPIO. And we have uh, controlled the DC motor. And then we have read the, the, the encoder uh, again through a GPIO and sent uh, the, the information back to Linux uh, and, uh, and uh, plotted through a Qt application uh, on Linux uh, for, the, for a dashboard. So I can show you the, the video. I have a, I skip uh, the, the first part. So this is uh, the setup. We have an NVIDIA Jetson TX1, the wheel, and uh, the Qt application and the joystick. So um, if, uh, if uh, so this is the board uh, I, I was mentioning uh, before. And so you can, you can find this uh, on YouTube. And uh, here there is the joystick. So uh, and the Qt application, of course. So, if uh, if you move the joystick, uh, the, the the you can set the speed of the of the wheel, and uh, this is uh, shown on uh, on the on the Qt application. And and then if you stop the the wheel, uh, the encoder uh, the encoder uh, shows uh, the 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 new speed. So uh, last, uh, last topic, uh, I, I would like to mention uh, um, the problem of uh, interference on hardware uh, resources. As I was, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, um, uh, jailhouse is a very tiny hypervisor um, partitioning all the, all, all, almost all the hardware resources among uh, the different uh, inmates. However, there are still some hardware resources, uh, like, uh, for example, caches and the memory bus and uh, the interrupt controller and so on, which are shared among uh, the different guests. So uh, this means that uh, um, if uh, one guest um, access a lot of memory, it, it can it can affect uh, it can affect uh, the the um, real time performance of uh, the other guests. In, in our case, uh, for example, if Linux accesses uh, the the memory, it can affect uh, the the real time performance of our RTOS. So um, we know that um, hardware vendors are working towards uh, having a memory controller with. Uh, 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 bandwidth partitioning among different guests, uh, among different cores. But at the moment, uh, this is not yet available. So there are some software solutions that have been developed and investigated uh, by the University of Modena in, uh, in the Hercules project. Um, among these software solutions, uh, there is cache coloring. Uh, cache coloring is a, a technique uh, for uh, playing with a virtual memory mapping to uh, have uh, um, different positions in cache uh, for for the different uh, for the different guests. In practice, uh, you, you don't want one guest to, to make a cache eviction for another uh, for another guest. So. You, you, you uh, play with uh, uh, virtual memory addressing for, uh, for ensuring that uh, um, the same cache line is not uh, shared among different guests. 
Um, actually, this, uh, this has been implemented in, in the jailhouse hypervisor and uh, it, it, will, it will be uh, likely released uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, another technique uh, um, is uh, MemGuard. MemGuard was uh, a mechanism implemented uh, for the Linux uh, kernel, uh, which is not available mainline, unfortunately, um, which allows to, uh, to uh, get information through the performance counters of the hardware about uh, how many misses uh, one, uh, one uh, task has done and then throttle uh, the, the task to, 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 to a certain limit uh, to avoid uh, to, to hover it on the, on the memory bus. Uh, this has been implemented again in the hypervisor and uh, by the University of Modena and it's going to be uh, released uh, together with the cache coloring. And then there is uh, the co-scheduling algorithm uh, which is uh, even more complex because in this case uh, the, um, the, the several uh, software running on the system must agree about when to start and when to stop um, memory usage. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, um, an algorithm uh, called the PREM has been implemented, which is uh, quite complex. So uh, all, uh, all these uh, techniques uh, have been implemented uh, in, uh, in the Hercules. The results uh, we will be part of, uh, of, the, uh, of a set of papers that have been uh, written, and uh, some of the code will be uh, released uh, through the mailing list of, uh, of the Jailhouse Hypervisor. So concluding, uh, concluding uh, this talk, um, we have uh, handled the mixed criticality system. We have uh, realized an ARM-based hardware handling both real-time and non-real-time uh, stuff. We have chosen to rely on hypervisor for having uh, RTOS certified for the automotive. And uh, most of the code uh, is already available under GPL. Some other code will be released uh, during the next year. And uh, th this is a solution working on uh, COTS ARM hardware. So no specific hardware have been uh, implemented uh, during the project. So if you have any question. So while, it, while it's nice that it works on COTS hardware, I seriously doubt that you can actually get a certification for it because you need actually verifiable and certifiable CPUs for yeah. running that in the real world scenario. And that's the main problem because we don't have them. So, and I'm, I mean, I know that a couple of uh, semi-vendors are trying to do that, but the, 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 the safety manuals I've, I've seen so far are more fairy tale books than anything else. So, so do you have any information when when we will get certifiable hardware? Already. You have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot it. Well, uh, as far as I know, um, some chip uh, manufacturers, I cannot provide the names, are working on certifying the hardware. However, still, as far as I know, they are not going to certify the Cortex-A platform, but the Cortex-R and the Cortex-M. Right. Yeah, so they, they, they are focusing on, on certifying that part, uh, which cannot run Linux. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the Cortex-R is definitely designed exactly for the purpose, so it should be easy to, to, yeah, yeah. to certify that. Yeah. But the thing is, the interesting, if you look at the, the the design you made, I mean, that's what everybody wants to have. And and then the Cortex-R is not going to run autonomous driving software. No. So you need a big core for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but 
uh, so far any attempt of uh, having safety manuals for big core machines I've seen so far it's oh yeah pipe dreams So you, you have been working with Gelaus for I think at least two years, right? Or even more? Yeah, um, yeah more or less. More or less years. two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what is happening to the project? Is it growing, uh, stable, uh, moving somewhere in terms of certification? So uh, for certification, uh, I didn't see a anything happening at the moment. Uh, as far as I know, also talking uh, with uh, people by Siemens, uh, they, they would like to see uh, more involvement uh, from the industry. So uh, Siemens uh, has developed uh, the, the, the hypervisor, which is in, in a good shape, I would say, even if uh, you don't have tools for creating uh, the stuff, but uh, um, uh, the, the technology is very valid. And so it's like, uh, as Siemens is looking uh, if uh, there is uh, really industrial interest for pushing even more effort on this. And uh, um, lately, um, as I was mentioning, uh, Jailhouse cannot run unmodified uh, uh, inmates. So you, if you wanted to run Linux on a different uh, non-root non cell, you had to patch the Linux kernel. Lately, this, uh, this patching uh, found its way to mainline so uh, so you don't have to manually patch it anymore but you just uh, through the menu config you you select the the, the change so uh, this means that uh, the, the the kernel community is interested in gelaus and uh, i would say that uh, it's a very valid we are happy about our uh, initial choice of the hypervisor actually Yeah, so one is a remark. Um, uh, I, I, I know that there are, uh, you said they're not, but I know that there are uh, Intel CPUs which have uh, support for um, controlling, uh, both monitoring and controlling cache and memory bandwidth and allocation. It's uh, mostly server chips, but uh, it's there. So, I mean, even just as a comparison, I guess you could uh, look into that. And yeah. it's implemented in hardware. I don't know if it's perfect for your needs, uh, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other is, uh, well, it's been uh, already partially addressed because uh, when you said that you are um, uh, looking into providing the isolation using uh, the uh, hardware capabilities and specifically the ones provided by virtualization, which uh, as a virtualization guy makes a lot of sense to me, uh, however, I wonder, for example, with the uh, latest stream of uh, hardware virtualization, such as uh, Spectrum and Meltdown and the what we were thinking, whether this, uh, because, I mean, it, I guess that uh, certifying something like that could uh, uh, perhaps be easier because the hardware provides the isolation, but we learned that uh, it might yeah. not be exactly so. So I was wondering whether, uh, I was about to ask whether you expect uh, uh, these recent things that happened to uh, like uh, make certification authorities less uh, happy about this uh, uh, the, leve the level of, hardware is of isolation provided by the hardware. And uh, now that you were talking already with Thomas and with you were saying that it's, we are not even there yet, uh, I wonder whether <laughs> this pushes the thing uh, e even farther. Yeah, yeah, it could, it could happen, actually, yeah, yeah, it could Because happen. I'm not talking about the specific vulnerability, I mean, there will be yeah. mitigation in jailhouse or whatever, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. The, it's the idea, the idea that... The, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> the, the fear that uh, given, yeah, could happen, yeah. Any other question? Okay. Uh, not a question, just adding to that what you said. Yeah, and if I look at the stuff we did, uh, we found recently how you can actually uh, uh, kill machines by just uh, using the proper sequence of instructions and which totally, totally fails to make progress. 
um, yeah, I'm interested in how, and that we, we have examples for that on ARM on, and on x86. So, uh, how do you make sure that this never happens, especially if you have, if you have multi-core systems, and if you if you go into the into the autonomous driving space, then your uh, picture of three CPUs and one in a cell is not going to hold because you have rather two CPUs for the non-real time stuff, and then you have mm. eight CPUs doing the the autonomous driving crap. Yeah. So how do we make sure that we never end up with these competing code sequences on two different cores, which totally wreckage uh, uh, cache line uh, uh, behavior, and then you do not make progress? So that's, this is totally frightening. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Have a good lunch. <laughs>